Hello everyone, I'm Son of Beast, and I'm Mephone. As the regular season is officially complete, and now we are about to step in the, the NBA, NBA playoffs. playoffs on 2K Sports. It's next after this. <laughs> Time for the rematch of the Grizzlies and the Timberwolves. Me and me phone, and along with a returning contestant to be here on the commentator is OJ. Thank you so much for uh, bringing me here, and this is game number four, right? Yes, we have moved on to game four. This is where we are coming down to the next uh, game to bring things in. So right now, the Grizzlies have taken the lead 2-1 over the Timberwolves in the series. But who will win next? Will it be the Timberwolves or will it be the Grizzlies two consecutive wins in game three and four? Well, uh, it's going to be very tough in, in between the matches, so we'll have to find out what will happen here. And yes, guys, if you guys don't already know that my creator of this part, that Adam has already got turned up to an ear age, so I give him a happy belated birthday to Adam Katz. So if you're on Instagram, Discord, Twitter, or even Patreon, send, you, have, you already wished him a happy birthday, well including me for myself, so I already did make a response. So it's it's great that he is the creator, head creator, of course, also the side creators as well. Well, I guess that it does turn out it's a lot of fun time here to enjoy the NBA, but now let's just keep this high thing on control to start game four of the season. Postseason still continues off where we left things right in the middle of it. Are you ready? It's time now to send you back to Target Center of the Western Conference Playoffs. 2K Sports welcomes you to the following presentation of the NBA Playoffs. This is a stunning target here at the Target Center here in Minneapolis. And yes, guys, this is game four in Minneapolis to start things here on 2K Sports. Of course, with me, Meepo, and OJ, Ali is the Border Sideline. Ali. NBA technology is moving faster than ever. The new thing? Collectible highlights trading online. The players are taking notice. Shooting guard CJ McCollum said, quote, A lot of players are inquiring about it. I've grown closer to the non-fungible tokens, trying to figure out what moments I should buy. Guys, he's a believer. Of course he is. We'll keep an eye on them. Thank you, Allie. And here are the rest of the lineups here, as the key matchup is on John Morant and D'Angelo Russell. Meanwhile, Steven Adams faces up against Carl Anthony Towns, and it's Patrick Beverly right on Bill Brooks, and here's the head coach, Taylor Jenkins. Taylor Jenkins is the only head coach that he has ever uh, helped out with his team. But for most of all of his uh, impression, he helps most of his career, and he has most records to bring on this game. All the tip-off is ready to play here as we are underway here in Minneapolis. And the tip-off wins for Minneapolis of Minnesota, and we start things off in Game 4, all fueled up and ready to go. Let's get this game on, let's go. Here's Beverly, he has already has scored a couple points here this drive. Russell with the cross off, with the shot, goes in and out, Jackson Jr. with the rebound. Now here's Brooks, he passes off to Bain. He's covered by Edwards, as screen takes over by Adams. John Morant lost it, and it's on D'Angelo Russell. And that's a great steal, because what they have done here so far, they have gotten a great solution here. They found a way to stop them. And yet all we know is Anthony Edwards, he is always on the attacker move. He's on starting to be a pro player. Beverly for three, Angelo Russell. And he's off target as Russ, Steven Adams takes it over. Brooks takes it over in the other lane. Screen on Adams. Over Beverly. Another miss by Memphis. 
And those guys are keeping the ball. They're keeping an open shot so ready. This is a hard take. Again, Vanderbilt. That's off of D'Angelo Russell. Bain on Russell. Now he moves over to Jackson Jr. Okay, and he gets his first bucket. D'Angelo Russell has received his first two points. Mercy of Memphis, Memphis Grizzlies for this season is always turning out even much better. But maybe at that time, can be a little bit tricky. Jackson Jr. can't make the two. On the other hand, Russell, Vanderbilt in the paint, and he drives and scores. And the Russell with the first assist. D. Russell, even to make them mini, they all love to be D.A. for D'Angelo. That's because of him, he is the king of the Timberwolves. Morant on D'Angelo Russell. He goes inside. Oh, he takes a dunk. He knocks down Carl Anthony Towns. Wow, unbelievable. That was a tough breakout. He bumps him out. And they should have called him a foul because what happened here? He knocked him over. And that would have been an easy call if it was uh, if he punches him right now to be an offensive foul. D'Angelo Russell, it's another two-pointer. It's now 6-2. Russell has four. Four points, not just what, what he wants, but he has it all. Rehab rebounded by Adams. Morant in the corner. Shot clock down to six. And the region foul is called on Carl Anthony Towns. That'll be his first foul. First five players for the substitution come up, and the next five players come on the court. The same thing going with Timberwolves. As all five players checked out, and we're all looking at McComb Beasley. Of course, that McComb Beasley just have it all, all of them down. But he is just an unstoppable player that he has always done here before in game one. To game two, instantly, one of the best players that we have. Shot clock to five. And the drive, and that will pick him up for the first two-pointer. And that will be Grizzlies trailing by two. Here's Beverly, only haven't scored his run yet. It's three with the screen. He dishing it up in the corner now. Passes to Reed. Over again. Rebounded by Jones. Jones has his first rebound in this game. And Conkar in the pursuit. He makes a drive and he has all tied up now. Looks like on car has all them pressure on taken. Here's Beverly. He rolls it over to face the screen attack. Down to a last minute left here in the first quarter. Bree still trying to get this first bucket here. With the first one. And he makes it in! What a point shot score for Reed! And they have gotten the lead! Awesome play for Reed! Not even just the only man himself, but, but you know, he's got enough for more uh, more bucket timing to get that one correct. Jones swoops it around in the paint. The floater goes, and it's Jones' second bucket. They have gotten numbers out there. There's still more time left for the Timberwolves and the Grizzlies, but they really got to keep an eye on them. Beverly on Jones. This is off to McDaniels. Screen attack again on Reed. Back pass to Okoji. He goes up. Misfires and across, and it went up short. Only five seconds left for Conchar. Anderson in, layup drive, rebounded, and he got the buzz beater! Wow, what a show running performance it is. I'm definitely telling you, they've gotten some good skills here. And we'll be right back after this. 10 to eight is your score. Memphis lead by two. On now to the second quarter. It's right now, this Memphis Grizzlies has gotten some a uh, little bit of uh, little bit of talk and facing going on in between the day and strength. But what is your take here, guys, with all the effort that they have played? 
Well, my personal take here, because if uh, Steven Adams is already get played as well on defense, those other teams could be a lot that harder to make a challenging play. But all I know is that uh, Dylan Brooks has been playing the best so far. Sometimes for, uh, for the three, sometimes for the two, you know? That's a lot of, uh, a lot of work going on. I personally agree, because sometimes the, the Grizzlies have some great average here, and what they have done so far, well, they've gotten a lot of great hustle. So the second quarter has started right now. Here's the Koji. Taking inside the paint. Inside, great rebound by Gonchar, and another miss by Minnesota. That's a great a lot of skills here on defense because they have an all in pressure line they in. And that's what happens. They've got a lot of pressure. Gonchar. He goes up and he misses as Beverly peaks a first rebound. Beverly's got a great uh, average of skills out there. Might know for himself, he goes with the first rebound that he really wanted to help his team get right into hype work. Six on the shot clock, three with another screen, and two for Koji, still no good. Well, this is a lot of hard uh, transition out there. A Koji's not doing getting his uh, getting his team better. But what has gone gone wrong lately? Well, it's because of what they have done so far. And that's because all the other players have it out. Well, it should have been Beasley anyway. My bad. The first time that is called by Minnesota with 324 left to go. And not the only Minnesota team that has already gained better, but the Minnesota Wilds. They have already crushed them here in game two, in game two and they have tied it up 1-1 one, one, right on the National Predators. They actually do here because that moment of uh, players, they got a great average here. Because of what I cup uh, Kent Brock, then Mark Zuccarello, Matt Zuccarello, I mean, and most of all, I guess they are looking for a chance to go right to the Western Conference Finals to take it from here for the Stanley Cup. I think there might be some good average here in between Minnesota and sometimes around the upper team of Nashville, because this is a fun fact. Memphis is, in, is located in Tennessee, and for Minnesota, it's always in Minnesota. Minneapolis there too. Yeah, of course, now they got some great average here in between the Predators and the Wilds, and with basketball too, both Grizzlies and the Wolves. New changes are being released here, and most of all, we got Vanderbilt coming back in. Now Edwards will take from their position. 3.20 left to play in the first half of the period. Angelo De Edwards. Tyreen Prince will help him out. Five to shoot. Edwards up. He goes off target as Morant picks up another rebound. Now Morant. He's covered by Edwards. Moves inside. Oh, watch out! Joe Morant slams it down, and what a running performance for him. He is a remarkable star. Unbelievable. That play was just like that almost caused a foul, but he was given up here just like that. And that was a Morant slam dunk presented by AT&T 5G of the slam dunk. From the ultimate internet access, any year, any contracts, only at AT&T. Now here's Brooks. Only scoring drop for Timberwolves since 325 per minutes of this game. Of game four. And it's stolen by Carl Anthony Towns. Russell picks it up in the other lane. He goes from elbow from the box. Rebounded by Baines. Baines has got a great defense here. A lot of uh a lot of discommunication here, but there is nobody open. First foul called on Anthony Edwards. That'll be his first foul, first team foul on Minnesota. Stop the clock at 2.05 left in the second quarter. This, uh, this is very hard in transition because of what they have done. It is a very hard disbelieving of this game. Not to expect what it's going to happen, but it's very hard for them to try to get in the way. Ben
Baines, first shot, wet missed. And now the new changeup for McDaniels will be checking in for Tyreen Prince. Tyreen Prince is checked out. Bain hits the second free throw. That's one out of two for Bain at the free throw line. The, the Timberwolves trailing by seven. We have under two minutes left to play here in the first half. Adams on Towns. Adams can make the rebound as Carl Anthony misses. Oh, that's a tough transition out there. I'm pretty sure that it looks like Steven Adams has already picked up a piece of it. Brooks inside. And he can't make it out with a number two. D'Angelo Russell going in the elbow. He's got it. And that is a number two pointer for D'Angelo Russell. He has six in the game. D'Angelo Russell, what a play making he has earned. Most of the time, that's because of what he has done here before. They really got a great average. A number two release bit as picked up by Brooks. And that will be a number one for Memphis to lead by seven. Russell, try to step around on Morant. Backing over Edwards, back to Russell. The Minnesota is moving the ball quickly in between the zones. Five to shoot. Edwards for a two, and can't make the two-pointer inside. Brooks in the uh, other lane here as we're approaching down to 40 seconds. Brooks in the jam! He has slammed in! And it's now 19 to 10 lead. They've got a great average here. Dylan Brooks, a best playmaking in the books. Man, oh man. Russell, back to Towns. Back to Russell for three. Rebounded by Baines and never missed by Minnesota. They got a lot of average here because the second team seed, they have already pressured it. They have a lot of uh, average in the making. 10 seconds left for Moran. Passes off to Jackson Jr. Inside, and I will get his first bucket in the game. Russell with the ball. Can't make the half court shot. That ends the first half. It's 21 to 10. Minnesota trying to sneak their way up. And we'll be right back after this break. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back once we get the third quarter started. Close calls in between Minnesota and Grizzlies. But Grizzlies have already been dominating a pressure. Let's check out the recap one more time for the Grizzlies and Wolves in the fourth game of the postseason. Report has already been occurred. Now it's take you back to Minnesota to start the third quarter. See you later. And we welcome you back here at Minnesota as we start the third quarter. It's 21-10 lead. They've got a higher average of player that done the best. But with all that moment that it brings out, it was all the team of Steven Adams, John ja Morant, Dylan Brooks, and because of all the players they have down, they got some higher average. They actually do, because what they have done so far, they've already picked up their challenges to work their way up increasing the game. That is a lot of uh, huge muscles, and they try to attack to make the ability come bitter from the end to on top to bottom. And I expect that because of what they have done here so far. Steven Adams is really picking up his good, good effort here on offense and defense. But most of all, he has never picked up a foul. He's already done good hands. Wow, Bain is already scoring a drive and a dunk. What a play, Russell. Here's D'Angelo Russell. He only scored six points in this game career in the fourth game. Edwards for three. 
it's D'Angelo Russell with the first assist. And it's now 25-13 run. Morant on Russell. He goes with the hustle inside. From the paint, back to Jackson Jr. He goes up, and a rebound is taken by Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt had a first rebound here in this game. Sometimes he knows that he can definitely play hard like he never did before. Beverly, what a strong drive, and he is on the board. Magic Beverly welcoming him into the game. Always know he's got a great, uh, great uh, player that he knows for. After the Clippers, now he wants to step things up here with the Wolves. Maria on Russell, passes to Jackson Jr. Over Edwards, and that shot's good. Edwards has the second bucket of the night. It's now 27 to 15 with only three ten remaining. Jackson Jr. only has gotten some greater average here. They've got some skills here. They know that they could definitely do it. The next timeout is being called by Minnesota Timberwolves. As with only 3.06 remaining. This is all that have been pushing out here from the end of a row that they already done here since they finished playing in game two. But they might be a lot hard to figure it out what they have done. Um, sometimes the average can be a very little bit difficult on the challenging because what they have done recently in the past few games, they've already got gotten some, uh, gotten some uh, uh, communications in between those guys. Maybe the most of them can be a very tough challenging in the, in the ball game. Once I noticed that the, that the Grizzlies really have had, uh, stepped up a bit, and they've already got streaking out the other players, except for the number one team, this could definitely be a hard team to face against them. Not for anybody, but they only have a, a bitter average here to try to work things around. And I personally bet that the Grizzlies may have another chance here. Because if they, uh, if they if they lose the game against the uh, against the Timberwolves in Game Five Six, well, there might be an average in between, and a Game Seven could be the ending for them. We may not have any of our players like John Moran, Jackson Jr., or even of course Dylan Brooks. That could be a hard. That could be a pretty harsh thing for the fans to go to disagree with. As for new players are checking in, here's become Beasley. He goes inside, passes to Reed, great job, but it won't be picked up here. But that's a great pass. That's a great uh, look open angle, but it was off short. And we have and we have Zendre Williams that makes the first two. He's now on the board. Williams got him a lot of uh, a lot of use of it. Sometimes it can be very uh, very hard to try to work it around a bit. Back to Reed. He goes right to Beasley for three. Answers the call, and it's a three-pointer for McCall Beasley. Beasley has already made his first way to get to the game. Awesome run. Now here's Conchar with the drive, and that will be a number two-pointer for Memphis to pick it up. Melton has gotten his first bucket. Now we approach down to two minutes in the third quarter. Pass the read. He goes inside, rejected! And that was a first block on Clark. Brandon Clark gets his first block on the Mobile One highlight. Wow, Brandon Clark, he really got a good use of his control. What a stop. And for Brandon Clark for himself, he's got a greater average here. They got a lot of good players that played here on the best. Now, Brandon Clark will be checked out. And all the other players, Tyreen Prince is checked out, and Jack, and Jack McDaniels comes in for Tyreen Prince. Now here's Beasley. Back to Beverly. Minnesota needs to get some shots here. Okoji can't make the three. Grizzlies in the lead still. They've got a lot of uh, they got a lot of players that they had done. Three pointer can't hit the free throw for Anderson. Akoji back in the ever lane goes right to Beasley. He goes inside the paint and he scores a drive. That's a number two releasement for the Timberwolves. They have lots of uh, greater speed and techniques here for Akoji. Sometimes it was McComb Beasley that already has killed him and off so far. That's a lot of working out. 
Melts him back. And he just got a piece of it for McDaniels. Man, just a bit. Nice job from McDaniels. Always pick up his run. And it's Beasley making a number two, and they are coming back in fast. Field goals updated so far. It's only 10 17 here for, for the Memphis Grizzlies that made the counter attacking a little bit tricky. But it might be very hard for them to make them, make them count. And now it's uh, Carl Anderson with another two point of releasement. And now changing back is Patrick Beverly. 35 seconds left in the third quarter. Beasley to Okoji. Beverly, I meant. Number two pointer can't hit the throw markdown. Now he goes right to Jones. Inside, and a shot back gets good. Jones is going a lot of crazy here for his gaming here tonight. And for Conchar with the assist, they always do. They've really got some uh, higher average here in the assist here for Memphis Grizzlies. And somehow, all you would say is that there is much more way to get the attacker down. Reach and foul is called on Kyle Anderson. They will stop the clock at 2.3 seconds. Now Jackson Jr. comes in for Melton. And new players are switching from the guards. And the ever tell five players just really wanted to change things up a bit. With the three, Carl Anthony, yes sir, he has made it. It's only a two pointer and the third quarter stops here. 35 to 24, there might be a scaling increase if there's a chance for Timberwolves to catch them break. If not, then it looks like uh, Grizzlies will take a two game winning streak in the playoffs. Right now it's 35 24, fourth quarter coming up next after this. We got played three quarters in this game, and now it's time for the final quarter to start the momentum for the last part. Glad you make us here on time as we are about to start things off for the last quarter left. It is coming down here very fast for the Grizzlies to be killing on the, on the uh, road streak. Those road streaks are the only possible ideas that they have already been played, but some home games can be very challenging. Russell up, rebounded by Jackson Jr. He has another rebound. And Bane inside. Anthony restricted the shot. And it's a first block in the game. A unicorn flying. You've got to catch some eye on them. Anthony Edwards makes a three. And it's now 35 27 ball game in that fourth game. Morant against Russell. Jackson Jr. with the screen. He goes inside. Great D, rebounded by Morant, and he had it all. Another two releasement for Morant, and it's now 37-27. Minnesota trailing by 10. This all happens to be because one of the players can be definitely be in challenging luck of their own idea. They can't be losing their streaks, but they gotta uh, get right on top of it. Grizzlies lead by eight. And he takes it again. It's now back to 10. This all happens again. One for Timberwolves, one for Morant, and one Timberwolves again. And it goes back to back switch. Russell finds Towns. Shot clock down to seven. To five. Russell inside. Vanderbilt, what a play, hustle inbound, and it's Russell with the assist. Great communication here with all the players of the unknown. D'Angelo Russell is getting a lot much better. And Jackson Jr., here we go, and the foul is called on Carl Anthony Towns, his second, second team foul. Wow, the fans are not happy already. They have just been killing dominantly, not just all of him. This is all be becoming to be a uh, decrease in the popularity in between the rivals from Memphis and Minnesota. Two shots coming up for Jackson Jr. stopping the clock at 3.05 left. He makes the first free throw. 
No foul is given off to Memphis Grizzlies as they didn't have any players to give fouls to. They've already been on quiet. They're on perfect runs. No foul troubles. Well, this is all that happens to him. They are really putting up a pressure. Second free throw for Jackson Jr. is good. Memphis lead by 10. Russell back to Beasley. Beasley back to Vanderbilt. Right over to Edwards. Russell back in the position to restart things off. Six on the shot clock for three. Rebound of Towns. And he puts it back in with the layup. Carl Anthony is picking up his way to get this number two pointer. Or at least when scores, always no doubt in questions. They've got it all good covered up here. And with the injury report, this all happens to be a pinch right elbow on a nerve system. Thanks to the uh, thanks to the, to the reporter, and that's all that happened here. He is out for the second game. To fourth game. Another rebound by Adams. Oh! Oh, he just got a dunk. He is on the streaking run. Grizzlies extending the field goals 59 percentage. Oh boy, Steven Adams, he really loves to stop the players down, but that was no question adoption. Anthony rolling around in the paint, and they are almost turned out to be a three second violation on Minnesota. Close call. Moran on Russell. Under two minutes left, it's 43-35. Rebounded by Vanderbilt. Again, with another miss by Grizzlies, they still can't find an open shot they have. Well, because of all the defensive players, they play very hard on the attack. They definitely have it all in the inbound. Moran on Russell. Helps the offense to make some switches. Bain in the corner on Edwards. Finds Jackson Jr. with the two, and he's got it. Bain with the e assist. It's now a 45-35. They lead by 10 again. The switchback is still happening again so far. Well, what's going to happen with them? It's a tough one. Adams has his rebound, and it's Moran with the ball. Last minute left in the fourth quarter. Screen on Adams. Moran to Adams. Right to Jackson Jr. with the layup drive. No good. Edwards with the ball. He pulls it around. Jackson Jr. Trying to make a crossover. Trying to come up with a different idea. Russell for three. Good! He is on the bed to stop the pressure. But it won't be enough to take it in time. Moran to Jackson Jr. In the elbow, back to Brooks, back to Van Jackson Jr. Stopping over is Jackson Jr. Inside foul is on Vanderbilt. It is third team foul is on Minnesota, and the streak is over to stop the pressure for Minnesota. Well, this is what they keep happening again. Too many fouls given up away. They've really got to stop the pressure. They have always been on a hard breakdown, and that's what they give dislikes to Memphis. Jackson Jr. back at the free throw line to shoot a number two as the Grizzlies are handling another free throws at the free throw line. The first basket for Jackson Jr. is good. And now the last change will occur for Grizzlies and the Wolves. Tillman, Anderson, Culver, and Jones are checked in. And on the other hand, we have all five players checked out. All five players are checked in. Layman and Balamar and Noel are checked in. And a second free throw is good for Jackson Jr. Now Noel will pressure it over. Layman for three. He has got it! He's got a first three-pointer in the fourth game. It's now 47-41. Not all of them. Layman has got a great personal love, personal best in this effort. All it turned out for him was just like a hard dominant score. 
After the personal foul is being given up on Laban, it will now be Anderson shooting two. And I forgot, always forgot to turn off the music here. Well, now they give up a silent. First free throw for Anderson is good. One more change up left. Culver, Jones, and Tillman are checked out. Thanks for Adams and Baines and Morant. They've got a great pressure here. And for Layman, he has fish, finishes his first three in the fourth quarter. Back to starting five groups. One more shot for Anderson. Second free throw is good. Timeout is the last call here for the Timberwolves in 13 seconds left. Coming up here later will be the another match of the tank. It will be the Suns versus the Pelicans to face things off here in Game 4 at New Orleans. And then we will stick things over here in the Eastern Conference section as we will have the next matchup in between the Raptors and the Celtics. Celtics have already increased 3-0 series. This could be a shout-out win for the Celtics and a shout-out loss for the first round in a series of the Toronto Raptors. Yeah, of course, we only have seen some other couple teams have already been starting up. Sometimes in the finals here, too, they got a shout-out blowing out as the Warriors already got made a win here against the Cleveland Cavaliers. That was all on them. They have already got pressures here on the numbers. In between those guys, well, <laughs> it's very that hard to go right in between a trip. And I am I personally agree because all the teams, they've really got some they got some great average here on the overalls. Now in presenting this New Balance player of the game, in game four goes to John Morant. John Morant, the only man for himself, only to be an all-star. And for eight points of this pressure gaming, well, he is like a he's like a true believer for the player to be living. Three-pointer can't hit. Last possession for the Grizzlies. And it's all comes down. The clock. And he will hold the ball. Your final score for tonight is 49-41. The Grizzlies takes two wins in a row here for the streak of game three and four. And now they will be back home to play against the Wolves in Memphis, Tennessee. This matchup is like a true outcoming to believe it. Moment of that time for my pressure for himself, it's all what they have here. They are definitely given a, given a world wacky run score. This season was just like incredible. Now we are, would like to present the three star players of the game. Starting off with OJ taking number three. So right now, number three, let's have a quick up look as I um, will start from here. We all know that D'Angelo Russell has gotten 11 points, 2 rebounds, and 3 assists. This is all on him. He's putting up a great pressure here on the board. And not for all of him. That's because of uh, how, how well he has played. Not with the Warriors. Now let's have your take on number 2, Mipho. Number 2. Okay, I'll definitely do that. Number 2 player, we all talked about it before, is Ja Morant. 8 points in this game. And game four, four rebounds, four assists, and just two dunks. How is he tough about it now? He is still a live player. He is just a he is just a strong how he can take the handle. He's like a world that never knows for him. What a hustle. Now let's have your take on number one. Number one, this all relieves them out that the most player had all in his season has gotten a great score. Well, we're all giving out to Jaron Jackson Jr. 10 points, 2 rebounds, and just a credible 10 performance in his career for Game 4. Now this will be another changeup to be in. What else do we can do? Well, <laughs> this could be very tough in between the matches. This could be the end for the Minnesota, or it will be Minnesota to keep it alive to go right into Game 6. Well, we'll have to find out later then, because there might be some other timing efforts that can be a little bit challenging on the board. And that is it. Thank you all for watching. And if you're tuning in for the next Western Conference games, we'll be right back with you shortly for the next one, as we will have the Pelicans and the Suns for the next game.
And then tomorrow on Thursday will be the next one for the two games of Eastern Conference matchups. As we will have the Bulls and Sixers and the Raptors and Celtics here on Game 4. With that being said, peace out everyone for as a while as the NBA playoff of the NBA 2K22 dial. And this has been a presentation of the game. So see you guys later for the next one of Suns and Pelicans. And for tomorrow on Thursday, Sixers and the Bulls, Raptors and Celtics. Tip your dome. Somebody.